Michael Jackson could be guilty as hell, and HBO's leaving Never- Neverland would still be unfair. Those are the words of John Ziegler. Welcome to the program, John. Glenn, I'm going to put the ever unpopular on my business card. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you need. That's what you need. So, John, I actually, um, you know, I know this this article, when you read it, you had a thought, yeah, you know, everybody's going to disagree with me on this. But we actually don't. Um, we've watched this. Uh, and I think, and I, in reading your, your article, I think you would agree, most likely these guys are telling the truth. Most likely this guy, uh, Michael Jackson, did this to these, uh, to these kids and many others, but he's not around to defend himself, and we're just presenting one side. This is dangerous. That's why I wrote the column. Uh <laughs> However, that that column was written a couple of days ago, and um, I, I'm not sure I would write the same column today because I am quite sure that one of the two guys in that H- HBO quote unquote documentary, Wade Robeson, is not telling the truth. Really? Uh, and, uh, yeah. Um, and, and let me put it this way: if he is telling the truth, then we might as well throw away the entire judicial system. <laughs> Because uh, there is absolutely positively no way for an accused person to defend themselves. Uh, because the Wade Robeson story is, on, on paper, is a complete joke. And I purposely went into watching the Neverland uh, movie. I don't want to call it a documentary because it's ridiculously one-sided, even yes. if Jackson is guilty. Let me just say, I hate this subject, Glenn. I hate being the person that has to stand up and say, wait a minute, but no one else wants to do this. And, and I mean, you said ever unpopular. That's even with my own wife. I mean, my (laughs) wife is furious at me with, (laughs) Um, uh, but I'm telling you the way robes and story, my, my dog in this hunt is not Michael Jackson. I don't care about Michael Jackson. I care about the truth. And I really, really care about the rules we're creating for how we evaluate these kind of stories, Agreed. because that is radically changing in a very dangerous way. Mm-hmm. And if the Wade Robeson story is allowed to stand, then I seriously, Glenn, I do not know how a rich, famous person uh, is able to defend themselves against any allegation because I have evaluated these kind of stories for years now and this one is the most inexplicable uh, that I have ever seen. Why do you uh, say and, that? Why do you say that? Well, because I mean, in all seriousness, again, he could be telling the truth, but if he is, then on what basis would any story ever be discredited? Let me, I mean, I could talk to you for hours about this, but let me just give you a couple of highlights. I mean, the, here's a guy who I'm, I'm forgetting about the fact that at 12 years old, he testified in a, in a civil complaint that uh, Jackson never did anything to him. And mm-hmm. he was the greatest thing ever. I'm mm-hmm. discounting that. Okay. Mm-hmm. He's 12 years old mm-hmm. and supposedly still being uh, abused. But at 22 years old, as an adult celebrity, Okay, people need to understand, he's a celebrity. This is a guy who who allegedly broke up Britney Spears and Justin Timberlake because he had an affair with Britney Spears. Now... Right there, that's confidence, folks. That's that. That is not consistent with what, with what we're told is a sex abuse victim. This is a worldly guy at 22 in the midst of a massive criminal trial. He is not just a a witness for Michael Jackson. He is Michael Jackson's first defense witness. I know Michael Jackson's attorney, Tom Mesero, very well here in Los Angeles. Tom Mesero is a brilliant guy. He believes Michael Jackson is innocent. I do not know if he is or not. I'm, I'm agnostic on that issue. But as far as Wade Robeson, there is no way in hell that Tom Mesero or Michael Jackson, if he's a criminal mastermind, is going to put Wade Robeson on the stand first in his criminal trial if he's abused him for seven years and end that uh, Tom Mesero, who has interviewed him vigorously, his family vigorously, is going to put him on the stand first. This is this is the, the testimony, which was vigorously defending uh, Jackson, is, is only one of a thousand data points that continue well after the trial and well after Jackson's death that Robeson was never abused. After Jackson dies, Robeson issues one of the most uh, ebullient 
pro-Jackson statements I've ever heard anyone give. He's the greatest human being that's ever lived. He writes a chapter in a book eulogizing Michael Jackson. He attends his funeral. And then it only shifts. It only shifts immediately after when Michael Jackson is dead and Robeson loses out on the job to choreograph a Circus Soleil Michael Jackson show in Las Vegas. And then he sues for millions of dollars. He, uh, the first time he ever tells the story to anyone. And in the course of that lawsuit, the course of that lawsuit, the discovery shows how he created his story. And, you know, the, the, the even I, in my column, I, I don't think I accurately described how that lawsuit uh, got adjudicated. It got adjudicated because of statute of limitations concerns, and that sounds like, oh, the, you know, mm-hmm. there, was, there was nothing about the merit. That's not really accurate. What really happened is it was statute of limitations concern, and then when he tried to figure out a loophole around the statute of limitations, the judge determined that he had blatantly perjured himself, as proven by emails, and threw out his entire testimony. So now, so wow. I mean, so if if this if this if Wade Robeson is to be believed and accepted with in a documentary with zero pushback, I mean zero skeptical questioning, zero informing the audience in the first hour of of some of these basic facts then I really, honestly, Glenn, I do not know how anyone years later can possibly defend themselves. And again, I don't care about Michael Jackson, and I hate this subject, but come on, people. This was totally... And when, we, we, when you see interviews with this director, Dan Reed, I have never seen anyone as invested uh, in a storyline uh, without facts than this guy. Uh, so, I mean, look, could Wade Robeson be telling the truth? I guess so. I guess Jesse Smollett and Chris Dean Ford could too. I, I mean, because I mean, frankly, uh, I, I, uh, th- his story uh, makes Christine Ford and Jesse Smollett look like uh, George Washington and Abraham Lincoln. Uh, wow. I mean, that's how ba- that's how bad it is. I mean, it's really, it is really, it's the worst I've ever seen.